Hey everyone, Boss Bafok here. Um, I'm fresh back from my trip to Napa Valley and I thought I would, my annual trip to Napa Valley as you guys know, I have a trip with a bunch of friends and we, uh, we go out and uh, visit our favorite wineries. What we do is again, we t typically go and um, we will uh, plan this long in advance. It's five of us now from various parts of North America. We all get together and we will book uh, wineries that are typically difficult to get into, uh, not your average stuff. Tried again to get into Domino's, even got really ambitious and asked them if we could do a uh, personalized tasting with Christian Monarchs. It's an impossibility, but I will get it done. This year though, the height, the uh, pinnacle was uh, Harlan. So got into Harlan, got to do a tasting at Harlan and I have an inn now and I'm gonna do Bond next year. Um, but we got into Harlan, beautiful wine as we all know. Um, Harlan and Screaming Eagle are the two top wines that come out of Napa Valley. I was able to get a two bottles of um, the 2013 vintage of Holland. We tasted the 2013. We tasted 2013, 2018, and I think 2019. Beautiful wines. Um, and I've got to say the 2013, which they pulled out the library for us, was phenomenal. Now, I need to just tell you that these are expensive bottles of wine. These were $1,800 each. I picked up two of those for the seller. Um, as you guys have seen before, I've been lucky enough to have a number of bottles of Holland. This is a 2093, 93, yeah, 91 being the first vintage. So I've had, an, I've been lucky enough to have a 91, and that's a 97 that I had. So I had a couple of Holland lying around the cellar. Those were amazing bottles. I've just, as you see, I keep some of the empties of things that I've had that have been really special. So Harlan was the one estate we met, we went to and I got some of their wines. Um, what else did I, did I go and take a look at? Ah, we went to have a look at Cade and uh, bought a few bottles of three bottles of Cade that there is in there. Cade makes a few bottles. And when you go to Cade, what happens is you actually go to Odette, which we'll get to. Um, and at Odette, they have Cade, Odette and Plump Jack are the three wineries that the owners of of Odette now have. Now, Cade makes a few wines that are all beautiful bottles of wine. The pinnacle being um, the 2019 and the pinnacle being their reserve, which this is their reserve. Um, they're actually moving to screw top bottles, if you can believe that, both for Odette as well as for Cade. That's quite an interesting thing. If you consider that this bottle of wine costs 350 US dollars, the fact that they're now making it screw top, the reason I got a couple of bottles I bought three bottles of this, two uh, were, uh, the reason I've got corks here is because the restaurant industry still demands for bottles of this price, while, while we're paying 350 x seller, they're probably selling it close to $1,200 US on the, on, in the restaurant. The restaurants are insisting still for that price to have um, um, corks in the bottle. So the other three I bought was Odette, again this is Odette's Reserve. I believe I paid $250 for the reserve, Odette. Um, beautiful wine. And this again is the 2019. 2019, just this remarkably uh, 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 vivacious, um, sort of in your face, energetic uh, um, um, bottle of wine. It's just an incredible, every, every, and I bought a lot of 2019s across the board here. Uh, 2018 was a beautiful vintage. 2019 is this really interesting vintage, as I keep saying. Um, so we so we did a bit of that. Um, the other one we, we visited, we, where I bought some wines, very impressed, was Marciano. Marciano also makes incredible kosher wine, interestingly. Um, and this was their flagship. It's their Napa Valley. Um, and um, it was just, this is a Bordeaux blend, by the way. Um, and it's called the M. This is just a wonderful, wonderful wine. I really like that. So I bought three bottles of this guy as well. Um, I also bought, well, what else did I, did I pick up? Let's have a look here. Um, ah, yes, went to a winery called Brion. Um, don't get confused with Hope Brion out of, out of Bordeaux, although it surprises me um, that they're allowed to have a font that's so similar um, to Hope Brion. Um, of course, Hope Brion is right over there. 
um, and that's the first growth French wine, the Haute Brion. Not to be confused, as well as, um, you know, I've also got, of course, um, Chateau La Michon Haute Brion that they make. And then, of course, uh, at the top there, you can see La Chapelle Haute Brion, all made from the Haute Brion estate, all beautiful wines. Not to be confused, this is not to be confused with that, Brion or Brian, but the French version of Brion. Um, this is the Sleeping Lady Vineyard, uh, and it's it's just a beautiful, beautiful winery, actually, and I was quite impressed with this one. Recommended to go and have a look. This is um, their Cabernet Franc. Now, I love Cabernet Franc, but it's very hard, I find, to, to find wineries that make it really well. Napa Valley is doing a phenomenal job, both with the blending of Cabernet Franc, as well as just, you know, making it on its own. Um, and so I picked up three bottles of the Brion Cabernet Franc from the Sleeping Lady Vineyard in Napa. That was beautiful. We also went to, as you know, I talked to you, about, to you guys about this before. Um, Andy Erickson, who was the second winemaker at Screaming Eagle for a long period of time, then went on and started um, Seven Apart. He's one of the owners of Seven Apart and is a winemaker there. These are beautiful wines we bought last year. Talked to you about those. Um, of course, Elman. Uh, he's the winemaker there as well. The big uh, mattress family out of Florida, ex-South Africans who are in Florida. He's the winemaker there. And then he has his very own winery called Favia. As you can see right at the top, that's Favia. This was a blend of Cabernet and Cabernet Franc. Again, I love Cabernet Franc. And, you know, you're not going to find a better winemaker in the world. Um, you know, then Andy Erickson. I was able to meet Andy and do a wine tasting with him at Favia, which was a fantastic opportunity. That was wonderful. Um, and then another hugely impressive um, um, tour was this right over here. This is Lithology. Um, beautiful winery in Napa. Um, this is their Cabernet Franc. Again, another beautiful Cabernet Franc. And this is out of the Beckstoffer vintage, uh, vineyard. So Andy Beckstoffer's um, uh, uh, vine, this is from the uh, vineyards, and this is the Dr. Crane. From the doc they had some Cabernet Franc in the Dr. Crane uh, vineyard, and this was just absolutely beautiful. Lithology, of course, which is the study of um, rocks and soils and things. Um, and just a beautiful wine. Now, again, not cheap. Listen, you know, the places I'm going to, Nothing's cheap. These things, these wines are starting at about $200 to $250 a bottle and moving up to, you know, as I said, um, yeah, you know, the, um, the, the Harlan is, is around $2,000 for the current vintages. Um, the flagship, of course, of Lithology is this bottle right over here. And these are the 2021 vintages. These are going to be possibly, you know, the absolute gem of Napa Valley. They're talking about this being similar to the 2005 uh, Bordeaux vintage. This is the flagship, it's called the Alejandro, which is their flagship Cabernet, um, which is the family, the, the name of the founder of the family who, who own Lithology. And uh, this is a 100% Cabernet, um, again from, uh, and this is out of St. Helena, a uh, beautiful, beautiful bottle of wine. Uh, very impressed with this, and I bought a couple of bottles of this one as well. Um, and the the last one, I think, unless I'm missing something, it might come back to me if if, if I see if I see it. But another really really interesting uh, winery wrench is called Learner Project. Learner being the last name of the family that owns the 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 wine. And why I really liked this particular bottle, I wasn't going to buy anything from Learner. I'd really I'd already bought two cases of wine. But it comes from the so-called Huti, the Hui, sorry, vineyard, um, which is a very famous vineyard in Napa Valley, and I and I really was impressed with it. So I just bought one bottle, see how it uh, see how it, it ages. Um, I may buy some more down the road. Um, Stu and Karen Lerner, the the owners of the winery, and again this is from the 2019 vineyard. Just another beautiful, beautiful wine. And interestingly, the fellow that's that's working there and in charge of the, of the tasting room is the guy that I met at um, Wheeler Farms. He used to run um, catering at Wheeler, at, and oversee the catering and the food side of Wheeler Farms. And he uh, put together a beautiful dinner for us over there. 
Um, this is the 2017 Cabernet that I bought about five, about a half a case of, which is just incredible wine. Um, and he was there and set up the Learner Project uh, tasting for us. It was beautiful. Highly recommend these wines. I would say Lithology was the big, um, the big standout for me. I just absolutely loved it uh, for this year's trip. Of course, um, of course, uh, Harlan is is always incredible. Lovely to have some Harlan back in my estate again. Um, you know, you get sort of Scream Eagle and Harlan, then you get Scarecrow, um, which is a close second to to Harlan, and then of course, you know, you, there's so much other incredible stuff from Napa. Um, Plump Jack was really beautiful too. I just didn't end up buying anything from Plump Jack. Of course, Brion was something very interesting and new, which I really enjoyed. Um, Cade and Oded are two wines I know very well. Really loved those. Um, it was a wonderful trip. Um, so, uh, uh, stayed at um, the Harvest Inn in St. Helena, where we always stay. And it was just beautiful to be in Napa. So thank you, everybody. That's the update in the, in the wine room. And uh, I will... Catch you guys soon again.